Hi, and thanks for watching episode 10 of our trader series. My name is Vincent and I work at Maven. Today I would like to discuss Delta and Gamma, two properties uh, of the option. And as you've seen, we have discussed a couple of properties of options already. We've seen payoff diagrams and what the value of an option looks like away from expiry. Um, but today I would like to touch upon a new concept, the concept of Delta. There are three definitions of Delta. And the first one is the most technical and straightforward one. Delta says something about, if you look at the payoff diagram of the option, so to recall, this gray line represents the expiry graph, like what would the option be worth on expiry, and the yellow line would say what is the value of the option away from expiry, let's say six months before expiry. And Delta says something about how steep is this particular line. So here you can see the line is rather flat, so the steepness is around zero, and here we become steeper and steeper, and here the graph runs like in a one-to-one -one fashion, as in the stock moves up one dollar, then the option is worth one dollar more. So here the delta would approach one. The second one is the more intuitive definition. The second one says delta equals the probability of the option lending in the money. And if you recall what in the money means, it's like if in December, in our prior examples, um, the option, the stock will trade in this region, then the option is worth something. We call that in the money. So, as an example, let's say the stock right now trades 95, right? So you see the steepness of this particular yellow line here, it could be something like 0.1 or let's say 0.2. And 0.2 would translate into there's a 20% chance probability that at expiry the stock will be on the other side. So it's a very intuitive, uh, intuitive concept. And the third one we need to discuss a bit later on, it's about the amount of stocks you have to trade to be dynamically hatched. We will come back to this particular thing later. But bef before we discuss this, um, an example. So let's say right now the stock trade's already 105, so that means the option is already in the money. Then you can also see that the yellow line is almost as steep as on expiry itself. So there's kind of roughly a 100% probability that the stock will stay on this side. It's not exactly 100% because there's still some time left and the stock might just tick back down. So the delta here for an in-the-money option is well close to 1 in this particular example. And this is an interesting case as well. This is the at-the-money case where the stock trades exactly 100, exactly where the strike price is as well. And here the delta is, is 50, as in there's a 50-50 chance uh, that the stock will either remain on the left side or on the right side. So the delta of an at the money option is roughly 50. All right, a second concept I would like you to understand is one level deeper, it's called gamma, and it's the rate of change of the delta, so it's one extra level deeper. Um, so to give an example, it says something like, if the stock moves from 100 to let's say 101, so one dollar change in the price, and I observe my option, let's say the yellow line, how much does the delta change? So not the value change, how much does the delta change? So let's say we're trading 100 with the stock here. How steep is this line? Well, 50, as I said, because of the 50-50 probability. If we move to 101, the line is steeper, let's say 70. So the gamma would then be 20, let's say. It moves from 50 to 70 if we move up $1 in the stock price. Well, to highlight how gamma can be different, let's look at the purple line. You are already familiar with this graph anyway. The purple line represents the option price much further away from expiry. So let's say there's still a year to live. If we now analyze gamma, you can see that here, trading 100, the delta is 50. There's still, if you, if you trade at the money, there's a 50-50 chance that you will move in or out of the money. But now, if we move from 100 to 101, how steep is the line there? It's almost as steep as there. So here the delta would go from 50 to 55 or something. So the lesson we have here is that the closer you come to expiry, the higher the gamma will be of the other money option. Okay, how can we profit from all of this? That's a uh, fundamental question. And um, the key lies in volatility trading. And traders will always make use, volatility traders will make use of the third definition of delta. They would do something like this. They would buy, let's say, as an example, 50 times the 100 call, and the stock trades also 100. So we, we talk about 50 times the yellow line. But if you only do this, then you are exposed to the stock price moving. 
right? If now the stock starts going up, then you make a profit. But if the stock moves down, then you kind of start losing money. So since we are in the business of trading volatility and not direction that much, we would always kind of do a second trade. And that second trade consists out of selling shares. Like the green line represents selling shares, which is quite a straightforward line. If the stock moves up, you lose. If the stock goes down, you make. But how many shares do I need to sell, in this case, to be directionally hedged? That depends on the steepness of our yellow line. And the steepness of our yellow line is 50. As I said, the delta is 50. So in that sense, for each contract, I need to sell 50 shares to be directionally hedged. So that's what I'm going to do here. So next to buying the call, I'm also going to sell 50. The minus represents the selling. Times 50, this is the delta is 2,500 shares. Where does this 100 come from? This is the multiplier. As I explained in prior episodes, that each contract uh, gives you the right to buy 100 shares, hence this extra 100 is there. So next to buying 50 calls, we also sell 2,500 shares. And with that, I have combined, if I add the yellow and the green line, uh, I have the purple line. This is the total package. And as you can see, if we trade 100 and we move only for small, let's say you move up a dollar or down a dollar, you can see that the, the value of the package, the profit and loss, is not changing at all. It's still the same. So still it's kind of a big question mark how you can make a profit out of this, but the example on the next slide will kind of show how that's done. So I created a little scenario where the base case it is at time zero. The stock trades 100. The delta of our option is 50, and as a result, we were short, in the previous example, 2,500 shares. This is our dynamic hedge. So this comes down to our purple kind of payoff structure. Now on the next day, let's say the stock rallies to 102. That also means that the delta of our option will increase. Let's have a look. If the stock moves from 100 to 102, the steepness of the yellow line becomes a bit steeper. So it goes to, as an example, 60. But now we're not dynamically hedged anymore. We sold 2,500 against the delta of 50, but we should sell more to be covered for the delta of 60. So I need to sell an additional 500 shares to be perfectly hedged again. So let's say on the second day, the stock completely collapses. It goes from 102 all the way down to 95. What will happen to the delta of the option then? Well, let's have a look. If the stock completely goes down to 95, the, the yellow line is much shallower there. So the delta is, let's say, 30. But now I'm overhedged. We are covered for a delta of 60, but really I only need to be covered now only for a delta of 30. So I need to buy a, a bunch back at uh, 1,500 I need to buy back. And well, there's day three and four as well. Um, one thing to pay attention to, the stock goes up, down, up a lot and back down again. And we started, we end where we started again at 100, which is just, I took it as, a, as an example, but it's kind of nice to see that, hey, the stock makes a round trip and we get to do all these trades. And at the end, I'm again still dynamically hedged, right? The money's 2,500 here is there as well. But if you look at the sheet quite closely now, you see at what levels in the stock did I buy and sell all these, uh, these things? Well, here you got to sell 500 shares at a price of 102 on that particular day. Here, I was able to buy a lot of stocks back at a lower price at 95, and so on. So you can see all these trades I did here in the meantime are profitable trades. You get to sell stocks at a high price, you get to buy them back at a lower price and sell them at a higher price. So you can see if the stock moves around and you keep on dynamically hedging, you make a profit. So this looks very attractive. Everybody should buy a call option and do this dynamic hedging and make a profit. So where's the caveat? Well, there is definitely a caveat. Um, why? Well, one simple argument, what if the stock doesn't move at all? The stock starts at 100 and it stays at 100 until the very end. You don't get to trade any of these trades. And that combined with the fact that you don't get the option for free. Right? You had to pay for the option to start with. So the whole game kind of is that all the profit you make from these trades should outweigh the money you paid upfront for the option. That's the whole game we play. Okay, so in summary, if you buy an option and you start dynamically hedging the delta, that can lead to profitable gamma trades. These trades have to outweigh the price you paid up front, as I said. But how do we make a fair estimate? We will see that in subsequent modules, but in short, what you should be doing is you should reverse engineer the option 
and get the implied volatility out of it. The implied volatility will tell you how much do we expect the stock to move between now and maturity, and then you can make a call on it. We will see this later. And the opposite of all of this is to sell the option, but that's also something for later. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, uh, this episode and uh, more uh, to stay tuned for.